You've probably already heard about the Amazon fires. It's kind of hard to miss right now. They're, they're going viral on social media and in the news. So the Amazon rainforest still ablaze. It's in giant plumes of smoke, raging wildfires. The Amazon rainforest is being consumed by fire. But what you probably haven't heard is the unsettling truth about what's really going on. So let's chat. So far this year, nearly 73,000 fires have been documented burning in the Amazon, according to the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research. And this is nearly double the number of fires that were documented in 2018. And we are only partway through the dry season, which usually runs August through October. This means that the fires could continue to get much worse, and we haven't even seen the end of it yet. Last week, the city of Sao Paulo, nearly 2,000 miles away from the rainforest, was plunged into darkness in the middle of the day because smoke from the fires was mixing with low-hanging storm clouds to completely block out the sun. So why is the Amazon burning and how did these fires get started? Let me break it down for you. First of all, these fires are really nothing new. The Amazon basin, like many other regions and forests, actually has a dry season every year. And during that dry season for the past 30 years or so, fires have been burning on a pretty regular basis. However, unlike other areas such as California, Colorado, or South Africa, the Amazon does not naturally burn. It's a very wet forest, a very humid climate, moist with a lot of dense green undergrowth. So it's very hard to get the Brazilian Amazon rainforest to naturally burn. Prior to the 1970s, very few fires rarely ever even occurred at all in this region. However, as industrialization and deforestation have increased, so have the number of fires. The main reason for this is the prominent use of a technique called slash and burn, where farmers usually will go in and chop down many of the large trees that are there, opening the area up, allowing it to be more arid and dry out, and then once it's dry, they come in and they torch the whole area and burn both the, the dried out trees as well as all of the undergrowth, and then they use that land for other purposes such as grazing cattle or growing feed crops. So these fires are not like other accidentally set wild forest fires that get out of control. The Amazon rainforests are intentionally being set on fire to turn them into grazing and cropland. In the last 50 years, nearly one-fifth of the Amazon has been completely destroyed, and 91% of this has actually been driven by agriculture. An Amazon Watch report found that of all forests cleared since 2014, 80% of them currently have cattle grazing on them. Did you know that Brazil is the world's largest beef exporter and the world's second largest soy exporter? The top three markets for Brazilian beef are Hong Kong, China, and the European Union. The EU imports more than $600 million worth of Brazilian beef every year and more than 30 million tons of soy in the form of feed crop for other livestock. According to a recent USDA report on the feed crop market, corn production actually expanded exponentially in Brazil during the 2018 to 2019 growing year, increasing by nearly 25%. And to be clear, this soy and corn is not being grown to feed people. It is being grown to be used as feed for other pigs, cows, chickens, turkeys that we end up then slaughtering for meat. In the U.S. alone, less than 15% of all soy that is grown actually goes into human food production at all. The increase in these very intentionally set fires in the Amazon is being driven by the global demand for meat. Moreover, the current U.S. policies and tariffs are actually leading to a market price increase that Brazil can even get for exporting its beef and in particular its feed crops, creating even more of an incentive right now for Brazilian farmers and agribusinesses to increase these fire and deforestation practices so they can grow and export more feed crop. Now, to be clear, beef production is not sustainable no matter where it takes place due to the enormous amounts of land, water, and grain input that are required to raise cows and then slaughter them for food, plus not to mention the methane emissions that they emit. However, when beef production takes place in the Amazon, it is even worse. Annually, the Amazon stores about 200 tons of carbon per hectare of rainforest. And this is compared to a grassland, for example, which can only store about eight tons of carbon per hectare. And when forests are burned, not only do they lose their ability to sequester carbon from the atmosphere, but they also release all of that stored carbon that they were holding. 
So here's the deal. If you want to stop the Amazon fires and deforestation going on right now, you've got to start by cutting meat and dairy out of your diet. Hang on, hang on. I know what you're going to say. We shouldn't be blaming the individuals and it's not our personal practices and how we live our life. It's the capitalist society. It's the corporations and all these big agribusinesses and their practices and policies. We should be holding all of them accountable. And absolutely, I 100% agree. But here's the thing. We can scream and cry and protest and try and hold these corporations and government officials accountable all we want. But at the end of the day, the only thing that you and I individually each truly have control over is what we vote for with our dollar and the example we set by how we live our lives. How can we expect government officials or corporations to change what they're doing if we're unwilling to even change what we're doing? And sure, corporations, they lobby, they change laws, they even break laws to create the most profit for them and their shareholders they can at the expense of the environment, the people, the animals, etc. But here's the thing, we're still buying what they're selling and incentivizing that behavior. The single best way to hold them accountable right here, right now, is to stop giving them our money. Don't you realize that China, Hong Kong, and the rest of the world that is increasing their meat consumption right now is doing so because they are adopting a Western way of life that Americans have been showing off and setting the example of for many years. It's time to set a new example and show the world that a different way is possible. And indeed, it is. And to Emmanuel Macron in France, who is one of the few leaders that has come out unapologetically and said that these fires are an urgent issue, Here's what I say to you. Why don't you stop the help encourage the EU to stop importing Brazilian beef and feed crop? That would set a pretty powerful precedent and example, wouldn't it? Yes, but it would require people to be willing to change their diets. So if you enjoyed this and you actually want to learn more about this topic and what you can do to actually make a difference, check out this video right here and hit that subscribe button below and don't forget to hit the notification bell and suddenly I can't talk. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified next time I release another video. I'll see you later.